Hello everyone and welcome back to my Beyond History series in Kerbal Space Program 1.1.3 and in this episode we are going to try and bring back Philippe and Newcast from their mission to Mars, uh, hopefully bringing them safely back to the surface of the Earth. But first I want to talk a little bit about heat shields, in particular the ones that are on the mission that we are bringing back. On the Gemini capsule that they are eventually going to be splashing down in, um, we have this Soyuz heat shield and in a live stream in KSV 1.2.2, I saw data on this heat shield that isn't evident here. It says it's a lunar rated heat shield, and up here these say they're also lunar rated heat shield uh, heat shields. So I thought there was no particular distinction between these lunar rated heat shields when I built this mission. But in 1.2.2, there was extra data about heat absorption at uh, at I think it was 2,000 Kelvin at a specific temperature how much heat they absorbed. And the Soyuz heat shield was actually rated as absorbing a whole lot more heat. That was displayed on this side here. And we don't have that information here, but it seemed like it would ablate a lot more at a given temperature than the other lunar rated heat shields. So I've got this concern in my head now because it, I, apparently not all lunar rated heat shields are created equal. So yeah. I'm, yeah, this is, this is a problem, if this is true. So let's turn to our mission and talk about what we can do and what I'm going to do about uh, my concern here. Okay, so here we are in Earth SOI. There is Earth, and right now TAC Life Support is rebalancing the food, water, and oxygen, determining how much has been consumed. Uh, here it stays steady, but in these numbers it has to readjust to what this shows here. Uh, so, the thing is, we have the two heat shields, but this one has 20% of its ablator. So, even though it might have the better heat capacity or uh, heating rate uh, than this one does, this one still has f all of its ablator, this one has only 20%. So, that's downside with uh, working with this one. Uh, the heat shield loading should be pretty good on this one. But maybe still not as good as just having the Gemini capsule on the Soyuz heat shield. So that's another question. Uh, another thing is, uh, for some reason, when we were entering Mars atmosphere, this was unbalanced. And I didn't understand why. Um, everything has been placed on this symmetrically. Uh, there's nothing that hasn't been placed on this symmetrically. Uh, descent mode is off on both sections that have a descent mode but for some reason it had an issue. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to reshuffle the life support and I'll uh, pump the water and oxygen in here. We don't need to pump the food up because the, the quantity of food up here is actually more than, I mean, the water and oxygen will run out way before the food does. So we'll just leave that be. A note that there is some ablator on the Gemini cabin itself, just in case. Uh, all modules have a little bit. Uh, this one has some too. Okay, so that's there, and I'm going to pump this food, water, and oxygen into here to lower our center mass, get closer to the heat shield. Uh, let me make sure I'm doing that the right way around. Because I'm thinking that we're going to try and capture high in Earth's atmosphere like uh, 75 to 80 kilometers using this heat shield. Hopefully that doesn't do too much damage. <laughs> uh, and then, uh, uh, but not only that, use the engines as well to help capture. But uh, we'll need the atmosphere's assistance for that as well. And then after that, separate and then come down in the Gemini cabin because we've probably, I, I'm sure that we've brought this sort of thing down from a moonlight trajectory, right? We've sent uh, capsules like this to the moon and back. So I think uh, we can be certain that as long as we use this to capture at a moonlight trajectory, we can then be safe coming back with this. So that's the goal. The question is whether I can figure out how to do this without it exploding. So, um, ship manifest, we can dump the waste and waste water, and for some reason right now it's not making any sound, which is interesting. Nice. But still, for some reason, it decided to stop before 
anticipate that it's paused right now. We do have one other contingency thing that I'm going to introduce. Uh, waste and... Okay, it's just... It's gotta be clunky one way or another. Okay, so we've dumped the waste and wastewater. We could do that closer to Earth, but uh, we've done that. And we can unlock this locked fuel that I had reserved basically for this sort of situation and pump that down. Again, for the center mass issue. Hopefully to help with stability. So, yeah. Then we've got everything looking like this. And the question is whether this is a good configuration or not, and whether it'll survive. Hmm. Well, uh, like I said, I do have one other plan. Uh, let's bring the periapsis down just a teensy bit. Um, let's say 78. Okay, now it's still got... How much? We can get rid of this maneuver. Still got uh, day and 23 hours. So that's enough time to launch something that might be able to help in an emergency situation. Uh, and what I'm thinking of, uh, not that, what I'm thinking of is this UDMH depot. We could also launch Lunapod G. That'll take 19 hours to roll out, which gives us just enough time to maybe line up with this. Uh, UDMH Depot only takes 10 hours to roll out. Um, we need something that could potentially get to um, high trajectory, so it's not going to be something that's only meant for low Earth orbit. Moonport resupply could work, actually. Um, It'd be nice to have something with a lot of solar panels. What I'm worried about, okay, let's let's talk about what I'm worried about. What I'm worried about is that uh, this portion is going to explode, and but this will still have its heat shield, and then this capsule only has uh, basically one day's worth of supplies, but like really only three to four hours worth of um, electric charge right because it's not gonna have any solar panels to work with these are all down here uh, so it's going to be in a bad situation as far as supplies and electric charge and if it ends up in too high an orbit like its orbital period is more than four hours or worse more than one day we're going to have a rather large problem if this portion is lost so that is the concern, and uh, in that case, I would like something to rendezvous with it. And that's why I'm looking at possible missions we have already built that could uh, be launched quickly right now. They'll be launched right now into uh, a matching orbit, and then they'd be ready to go to uh, snag this in that situation. Maybe. It'd be hard to do the rendezvous anyway because we'll be past periapsis and they'd like have to do a lot of burning to try and get to it. Well, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll launch something. Let's go back to, I think we're all set here and we're going to use about 700 meters per second to slow down close to periapsis. And we'll try and use this heat shield. Okay, we have the UDMH depot on the launch pad now, and it's about one day and 11 hours until Aries Pod A gets to ap uh, periapsis, uh, one day and 12 hours, sorry. And we are here. We need to sort of line up with that trajectory. I'm going to use the rendezvous window from MechJeb to help me out here. We obviously don't want to time warp too far lest uh, we overshoot the timing, but I don't think that's a problem. I deliberately chose this mission because it would take less than a day to get to the pad and to line up. You know what, I'm just gonna switch to Aries Pod A to see what inclination it's at. Well, it looks like it's more than 44 degrees, but it's saying it's 44 degrees, so we'll just go to 44.44 degrees, and hopefully we can manage that with the mission currently on the pad. Can I switch to it using the map? Let's see. 
Or will it crash the game? Okay, we managed to make it back to the pad. KOS. So, edit Fiji 11. I'll have to remember that I did this edit because otherwise we're going to have a nasty surprise later on. Okay, so 44.4 degrees. We'll even say 44.44. I don't know if this is going to work out right, but at least we'll have a attempt to do something interesting. We're going north, definitely. Attempt to have a contingency. Okay, off we go. Okay, relative inclination is going the right way. Paying to target 49 degrees, well, that should be very close to our intended heading here. I made some edits to this, uh, only edits that uh, wouldn't take too much time. Uh, one was moving the propellant only docking port to the top so that it could use its engines. Uh, in case we needed it to do so. Otherwise, if uh, we kept it on the bottom, then using its engines would blast the capsule. I also increased the, the solar panel size just a little bit so that I could provide more power. Otherwise, it's just a fuel tank, which is good for catching up to something. Okay, our relative inclination with respect to the target is under 10 degrees, so that's good. Tending to the right direction. I'm not sure how good it's going to end up, but this is an okay start. Okay, we will be recovering the engine package, hopefully, though the floats didn't pop up this time. We have J2 ignition. I don't like how this staging is happening. Let's not do that. Okay, there we go. Fairings have separated. I had to leave these other docking ports on even though it's not efficient to carry them because actually taking them off took more time. So leaving them on ended up being the thing that would take less time. Uh, looks like we might have been a bit too early launching here. That'll leave some gap in the relative inclination, but we're doing reasonably well. 4.8 degrees and decreasing now. As you can see from the total delta V, on its own, the UDMH depot has 7,000 meters per second. And hopefully that'll be enough to catch up to our target mission. I'm contemplating whether to try and get to it before it even comes into periapsis. If that's possible, we could give it a go. In that case, it could help slow it down ahead of time. And that would make it safer for us to just use the capsule, the Gemini capsule's Soyuz heat shield, instead of using the one at the bottom. I'm generally nervous about trying to use the one at the bottom. Well, so far this is going much better than I expected on the relative inclination. We're down to 2 degrees now. Okay. We have reached orbit 282 by 243, 1.3 degree relative inclination with respect to the target, which I think is excellent as far as I'm concerned. Uh, so we're I, let me plot and see what we can do as far as getting to it earlier on. I don't know if we can, but um, if so, we could take advantage of that. But if not, uh, maybe it'll be better just to leave it for later. I'll, I'll think about it but we've got some time to work with here. Well, honestly, the timing on this seems a bit harsh. So if we do a 1,900 meter per second burn, 
Uh, we can get this encounter right here. The separation says 132, but I can mess around with it to get closer. Uh, relative speed, 3,800 meters per second, which is formidable. Um, but then you see the T minus one day, seven hours and 16 minutes. Uh, that gives us 18 minutes until periapsis. I don't know. I think that might be hard. And uh, by the time we do that, we're not going to have much delta V to impart to the vessel in order to do something useful. Uh, incidentally, we should probably kick off the J2 stage. So, uh, let me see if we can time it so that it can help the mission on the way out if necessary. Well, here we have a sequence of burns to potentially get to it on the outward bound trajectory, but I'm not too sure if I really, I mean, if that's going to be its trajectory, right? I mean, it's it, presumably we want it to capture, so it's not going to be on that line out. I uh, basically I don't know exactly what to do with this. <laughs> uh, it was a good theory, but um, I'm not entirely sure what orbit to put it in right now. So we'll just leave it be. I'm just gonna leave it be. I'm not gonna do anything. Uh, we'll try and bring the other mission in, and this is a contingency thing. And if it turns out that it can help, that's great. But if it can't help, then that's just what it is. But uh, we've got it here just in case. Let's turn to Aries Pod A and try and bring it in without any weird stuff happening. You know what? I'm nervous about trying to use this heat shield and this whole bulky thing, especially since it had that tendency to tilt in in Mars's atmosphere. There's something screwy about maybe this passenger compartment. I'm not sure. Oh, so the engines could explode. Not that that might be a problem, but I'm not sure. So there's a lot of uncertainty about this whole package. I'm going to try and just aim lower in the atmosphere. Periapsis, uh, 60, 65 kilometers, hopefully will do. And we're going to use the fuel to slow down, but then we're going to separate this off. That's... Yeah, it's a toss-up what might be the best way to go, really. So, uh, actually, we should change our periapsis. Going to use SAS so that persistent rotation works and we remain facing the sun and don't lose electric charge. The problem is uh, bringing this heat shield into the atmosphere is one thing. That's something I've tested. But I recall this having some weird sort of tilt issues. Uh, I, I don't buy that it's aerodynamics, but maybe, I don't know. There's something weird about it. And if it was having trouble in Mars's atmosphere, I'm not sure I want to find out how it does here. The Gemini capsule alone, that's one thing. That should be all right. The scent mode is off, but I felt going into Mars's atmosphere like it had some sort of imbalance anyway. Okay, we'll begin stuff soon. Let's see, around here. All right, let's retract solar panels. Not, actually, that doesn't matter because we're going to let that go, but anyway. All right, we're going to have to have some pitch to maintain our periapsis. Don't know how much. All right, let's go. Uh, that's going down. Well, that wasn't too bad, actually, as I guess. The fuel in here is not quite enough to get us a capture. This fuel up here is still locked. We'll unlock it once we separate that off. I mean, this seems like moon-like velocities, which means maybe I should even have the periapsis lower, come to think of it. 65 is usually pretty high for a return from the moon. Okay, um, let's unlock this fuel. Turn orbit normal to get rid of this whole thing. We need to capture into a low orbit, so that's that's a catch. 
Hmm, it doesn't seem to be turning orbit normal, but that's all right. This this direction is fine by me. Right. We're not using descent mode. And now we're in trouble, right? The clock is ticking, electric charge is going down. We have limited food, water, and oxygen. Oxygen is the one that's lowest, 23 hours. Okay, we have atmospheric interface and about 11,100 meters per second. I'm gonna arm the parachutes now. So, did I make the right decision, or should I have gone with the keeping the service module? Well, there's a service module exploding, but that's not indicative of anything at all. Let's take a look at the heat shield ablation rate and everything. It's definitely started to ablate. And we have some effects. Bit of a yaw and pitch thing going here, I don't know why. We've captured. Let me change the camera. And there's a little thermometer reading there. I don't know why there's a yaw and pitch thing. Ablation rate is fine. We uh, seem to have enough ablator. That's good. I don't know whether it would be an okay... Well, why? Why is there all this pitch and yaw? Descent mode is not on right now. But maybe it was the capsule itself that had this problem. See, I mean, this was what I was afraid of with... But I thought it was the big Gemini compartment causing it. Apparently, this has some sort of issue like that. But maybe it'll be alright. And maybe we'll even come straight down. Uh, our orbital period is low enough now that the electric charge will hold out for a go around if necessary. And we might still go around, yeah. So not perfect. But it sure as heck could have been worse. Well, that's. That's good. <laughs> oh god. All right. All right. Well, uh, and we might we might still be able to come straight down. It depends. We're we've passed the flame effects, but there's still some atmosphere left to go. We'll see. Uh, maybe I should turn descent mode on and uh, roll 180 at this point. Oh, that's not helping our periapsis that much. That's too steep. I don't want to have a periapsis of 45 kilometers. So far, 3.7 Gs. We used more than half of our bladers, so... Uh, if this heat shield is anywhere the same as the other heat shield, the other heat shield probably would have lost too much. So yeah, this was the phase I was where if we ended up in the orbital period that was too long for the electric charge, we could have tried using that uh, UDMH depot to catch up to it and grab it. That would have been a tough call, but if you can't do anything else, might as well try. But it doesn't look like we're going to have that problem. In retrospect, slapping on some solar panels on this wouldn't have been a bad idea, but it would take a lot to actually recharge it because it takes two electric charge per second. So just a tiny surface mount solar panels wouldn't be enough anyway. Okay, approaching apoapsis and sure enough we're about halfway through our electric charge. So actually it was less than I thought it was as far as how much electric charge we have. It's actually the reaction wheel responsible for roll in this case. The RCS thrusters aren't really positioned for roll at all. 
Just going back and forth here. Um, this might not even be the right axis to be going in, come to think of it. Looks like our UDMH and N204 are actually imbalanced on this, which is surprising. Well, I think I can take 65 kilometers. Um, should we have the set mode on? I, I think probably at this altitude it's fine. We want a comfortable ride down for Philippa Newcast, I suppose. Our parachutes are armed. Okay, we're at 90 kilometers. I'll have it stop holding pitch. We're at 70 kilometers. Flame effects have started. 7,100 meters per second still. Ablator is ablating. So we needed more ablator, as it turns out. Uh, G-forces are still moderate. We'll see what they peak at. We do have descent mode on, but uh, it's still getting to 2 Gs already. 3 Gs. And basically peaking out at 3.5 Gs. We are over water. 23 degrees south, 80 degrees east. So, Indian Ocean. Whoa, that's sort of early deployment for that parachute, but okay. I did not expect that. Um, let's turn descent mode off. Yeah, normally I have it pressure determined. Let me quickly check what the other parachute is at. Uh, 0.25 atmosphere, 700. And this is typical of a main chute. I usually go for 0.3 atmospheres though, but this is fine. I'm surprised... Oh, this one... I had to default. Apparently I didn't uh, do symmetry on it. Well that sort of explains it. So our imbalance, the reason why we had that residual pitch in yaw was because I didn't apply the same stuff to both parachutes. So one parachute was 0 0.031 tons and the other 0 0.044 tons seems like that's a minor difference but I don't think I mean apparently it showed up because that's the only asymmetry in this other than if you turn descent mode on so yeah okay now both sides are out hopefully it'll be fine uh, as it is even though they aren't symmetrical Okay, we have full parachute deployment and we're at 5 meters per second, so that's good. Okay, here we go. And splashdown, sort of a floaty splashdown, but we'll have to take it. So, Philippe and Newcast, recover. Okay, so that was done. Uh, 1,600 science earned. Parts, we've got parts back, some parts. 13 XP gained from Philippe, and Newcast got 34 XP gained. I wonder why Newcast, oh well, Newcast was the one that landed on Phobos and Deimos, right? So Newcast got extra. Newcast is now level 4. So, yeah, our uh, two top Kerbonauts here. But, yeah, it's interesting because uh, in the testing, I had been testing because I was nervous about the Soyuz heat shield, um, I had been doing dummy capsule testing, assuming that I was going to retro burn with the service module a bit, then use that main heat shield at 20%, and then use uh, an capture, and then come down from a moon like height with the Soyuz heat shield on the Gemini capsule. And then on the spot, I decided that maybe I didn't trust that because of the experience around Mars. So I went with what we did and it turned out all right.
Barely. I mean, it was barely all right. But yeah, uh, well, thank goodness. I mean, I it, it, the luck was with me. I I, I don't I don't think uh, yeah it, it could have easily gone the other way uh, if for some reason Kerbal was having a bad time with me. I can imagine that. And sometimes when I bring the same thing into the atmosphere, it seems to do something else. So, but the important thing is we did get them back. Um, and now they're available for assignment. Uh, there's Philippe and Newcast. So, on that note, and with this success, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.